It finally happened, people. Director Travis Knight has brought us a good Transformers movie with prequel Bumblebee, starring Haley Strainfield, John Cena, and the voices of Dylan O'Brien, Angela Bassett, and Justin Theroux. The plot is as follows. Bumblebee has been tasked by Optimus Prime to go to Earth to set up a base camp so that the Autobots can counterattack on Cybertron. But unfortunately, once he gets there, he not only runs straight into the military, but ends up colliding with another Decepticon who destroys his voice box and critically damages his memory units. Before passing out, he becomes a beetle car and is picked up at a scrapyard by 18-year-old Charlie, an ex-diving champion who lost her father tragically, and the two of them form a bond straight out of the Iron Giant. All the while, a pair of Decepticons are looking for Optimus Prime and believe Bumblebee will give up his location. Now for my usual positive section, I will list off what this film had that the other Transformers films do not. For one, the main human character actually has a fantastic personality. Yes, she is a rebel, but this girl is hurt over the death of her father, is a massive car fanatic, is a great diver, and has a love for various music and films from the 80s, automatically giving her more depth than all the other protagonists that these films have brought us so far. The bond that the film develops between Charlie and Bumblebee feels real. Charlie the outcast, Bumblebee the fish out of water, Bumblebee is effectively a child being taught the ways of the world for a good portion of this movie, which leads to some hilarious hijinks and some truly heartfelt moments. This film is set in the 80s, but it doesn't force everything 80s to us like many nostalgia based films do these days. But the most prominent one is a consistent callback to The Breakfast Club, which being my favourite teen movie, I loved it. But I know it might annoy some viewers who might not have seen that particular movie. If you haven't, you really should. Charlie actually proves to be useful in fights, which is a rarity in these films. She's not fighting the robots, but she has a role and spends very little time having to run around these flailing metal bodies. Speaking of which, the action scenes, you can actually see what's going on. The camera stays nice and wide, and whilst it is still a mesh of metal on metal, the colour schemes of the Transformers and the wide angle makes it easy to see what's going on, which is such a blessed relief. In terms of story and character relationships, this film does it very well which is to be expected from the director of Kubo and the Two Strings. Also, I never really watched the show that much, but I know the designs and what Transformers fans are looking for. And some of the sequences on Cybertron seem to be taken straight out of the show. And there is a bittersweet Easter egg reference at the end, which brought a smile to my face. It just felt good to see a Transformers film go for more substance over style. And I honestly want to discount it from the canon because we have all seen what comes next and it's not pretty. Speaking of which, that being said, Michael Bay does have a producer credit in this and there are some Bayisms in this. For one, remember Sam Witwicky's parents? While not entirely as bad, Charlie's mum and stepfather are just as corny and cringeworthy. The only positive I can say for them is that they do sort of serve a purpose towards the end. There is also a brother she has who serves nothing apart from some silly, annoying, gross-out humour. And there's a character Memo who is kind of just there. It seems like they didn't know what to do to keep it just Charlie and Bumblebee, so they threw in a third character to be that third wheel for this friendship and be a sort of maybe love interest. And that character is just uninspiring. Also, let's talk about the man who cannot be seen, John Cena's character, Agent Burns. That character is so inconsistent with his motivations and his intelligence is constantly brought into question. Seriously, these two massive robots in front of him are having a conversation about fooling him and he doesn't hear it. The film could establish these Decepticons are speaking in a different language maybe, because the military as a whole looks stupid because they don't establish anything like that. Whether Burns shows up, he is nothing more than a minor inconvenience and his arc should not have been so damn loopy. Bumblebee literally says he doesn't want to hurt anyone to him early on, yet he is hell-bent on tearing Bumblebee apart. Maybe have a friend of Burns die due to an action caused by Bumblebee, then I could probably understand his hate. As nothing like this is established, the character is just an inconvenient party. This prequel also suffers from the fact it is a prequel. There are a few moments that try and fake us out that we never buy because we know what's coming later. And luckily the film doesn't spend too long on these moments, but these should be powerful scenes that don't work due to the nature of this film. 
Also, Charlie's got this oddball at the school side plot with some bullies straight out of a Stephen King novel. And that entire arc is effectively filler until the plot can continue. Performance-wise, Hayley Stringfield is fantastic as Charlie. Absolutely outstanding. Not only is she acting mainly across from a CG character, but she has to sell the bond with her deceased father without any flashback sequences and has to rely on her delivery. Just doing both of these made it a good performance. And just how she handled her personality as well, she was perfectly cast for this role. John Cena, we can now see why he was never turned heel in WWE. He just doesn't naturally come across as a bad guy or even an anti-hero. His best acting comes at the beginning where he's smiling and reminiscing with a friend. After that, he's just a one-dimensional look and doesn't sell the hardened look much at all and never really sells his hatred he has for these Transformers either. He does, however, no sell getting hit by one so I thought that was hilarious. George Leathermong Jr. is good when playing it serious, but every time his character is told to do something quirky and funny to be the comic relief, the performance just falls flat. All the voice performances do really well in their respective roles, with Angela Bassett being the most impressive as her character has to go beyond the usual Decepticon aggressiveness when she's trying to cozy up to the humans. She carries this voice performance really well. Overall, Bobby does a lot right, but is pegged back by a lot of weak side characters. I feel fans of the original show will enjoy this for all its content straight out of the original show, and I love the main plot and the Breakfast Club callbacks. But with some of the saga's usual side character archetypes, I feel this prevented the film from being truly great, and I was tossing between two grades. On the one hand, I wanted to go for the higher grade, because we finally have a good, competent Transformers film. But due to the lack of decent side characters, I feel this will suffer the film on a second viewing. So unfortunately, Bumblebee needs a bit more sugar. So everyone, if you enjoyed the review, drop a like and let me know your thought of the film down in the comments below. Hit the round subscribe button for more reviews coming all the time. This is that Spider-Man podcast, signing off.